In this problem, we're told two identical strings making an angle of theta equals 30 degrees with respect to the vertical support of block mass m, which equals 15 kilograms in this figure. And we're trying to find the tension in each of the strings, right? So this right here is going to be the tension in each of the, uh, each of the strings, right? So we label it T. And so that's what we're going to be solving for. So how do we solve this problem? So the way we solve it, right, the first thing you always want to do is just draw a free body diagram of what's going on, right? So this is our mass, right? And so it's going to have the force of gravity acting on it, right? Mg. So Mg is going to be pulling it down. And then we have a tension force in each of these strings. Right, that's going to be holding it up, right? So we know these tension forces are going to be equal to this, right? And so we just know that intuitively because it's not moving, right? So if the tension forces aren't equal, right, if this was less than this, it would just fall down, right? And so we also know the angle of this is 30 degrees, and we know the mass is 15 kilograms. So how do we solve for this? So the way you generally solve for problems where you have a force like this is you take the sum of the forces in one of the directions, right? And so what we know, right, is we know the forces in the y direction. We know mg, right? So if we can find the... If we can put t in this equation where we have uh, the forces in the y direction, we'll be able to solve. So just go along with what I say, and I'll explain how it works. But essentially, we're going to take the sum of the forces in the y direction. Right? And what are the sum of the forces in the y going to be equal to? So they're going to be equal to 0. Right? And so the reason that is is because force equals mass times acceleration. Right? So the sum of the forces equal its mass times acceleration. But we know it's not moving. Right? It's stuck in place because it's holding it up. Meaning if it's not moving, acceleration is 0 because velocity is 0. So it's going to be equal to 0. Okay. And then what we want to do is find the sum of the forces in the y direction. And when I say y, if you imagine an axis like this, right, I'm meaning the forces that are uh, parallel to this line, okay? So one of the forces is just going to be mg, right? So that's one. And then we have two tension forces, right? They're y components. Because we have to take the y component and not just the t because it's uh, at an angle, right? If it was vertical, we could just take it, but it's not. So what are the different forces? So when something's going downwards or pulling it down, we label it negative. And when it's going upwards, we label it positive. So one of the forces is just minus mg. And then plus, and then we're going to have to find the tension forces in each of these, right? So we got to find the y components of uh, each of these forces. The way we do that is by using trig. So let me draw this triangle right here. And so this triangle, what it represents is this triangle right here, okay? This triangle, all I'm doing is re, uh, copying it, right? And so this angle right here is this angle that it's being turned at, which we know is 30 degrees, okay? So this is 30 degrees. And then we also know this force, right? So you label each side a force, essentially. So this side is the tension force, right? The longest side... Uh, you just label it the tension. And so this is the tension force, okay? And since that's the tension, what is uh, what we're trying to do is solve for the hypotenuse, right? Or we're not the hypotenuse, we're trying to solve for this angle, or this side right here, right? Because we want the vertical part, right? And this is adjacent to the angle, meaning we can just label this y, right? Because we're trying to solve for y, right? Because if this is the tension, we want to find this side, right? Y. So how do we do that? So what you do is you take the sine, or sorry, you take the cosine of your angle, Right? And what is cosine equal? Cosine is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So katoa, meaning if we put y over t, right, the y over the t, and then multiply both sides by t, right, we know that t is equal to the cosine of 30. Right? So one of the tensions in these chords, right, the vertical part that we're going to plug into this formula is t times the cosine of 30. Right? But keep in mind, these are going to be identical. These on each side, because there's two of them, it's really 2 times t times the cosine of 30, right? Because there's two different forces. We just did one side, but it's the same on the other side. So there's going to be, uh, right? So the, the vertical component of this whole thing is just 2t times the cosine of 30, right? So when we add it here, the sum of the forces in the y, we have to add 2t times the cosine of 30, right? And what you should notice is t is actually in this equation, so we can solve. So that's just the basic gist of how you solve problems like these. You just want to plug in a variable and get it to a point where you actually have that variable in here. So I knew when we solved this that t was actually going to be in this, and that's exactly how uh, I knew we were going to be able to solve for it. So if this is the case, right, add mg to both sides, mg equals 2t times the cosine of 30. So if we want to solve for t, just divide by 2 times the cosine of 30. Right, that's going to cancel that. And then you're going to get uh, the tension, right, and this is just the tension in each of these, right? Because no, they're the same. These two are the same. So two, t equals mg over 2 times the cosine of 30. So you're going to want to go ahead and plug this in. So mg, so 9.8 times the mass, which is 15, right? And then divide that by 2 times the cosine of 30. And when you do that, you should get 84 point eight seven. Uh, 0, 4, and so on. So I'm just going to round it to 84.87. Keep in mind this is in newtons because it's a force. And then they wanted the individual, right? So they wanted the tension in each of the strings. But keep in mind this is the tension, right? Because we just solve for t. And what is t? It's just the tension in one of the strings, right? Even though they're the same, right? So uh, the tension in one of the strings or each of the strings is 
And yeah, so this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this useful.